quick reminder about something we said in class. A limit, in this case let's talk about the limit of this function, which I'll call f of x, as x approaches 2. It's not related to the y value of the dot that got colored in. It's related to the behavior of the function as you were coming toward 2 from either the left or the right, or both. So as I approach x equals 2 from either the left or the right, even though there's a hole there, I could tell that the place I was headed toward is where y equals 0. So I would say the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 2. If you asked me what f of 2 is, I give a different answer. f of 2, that's the result is going to be the y value of the point that got colored in, and that's We said for well-behaved functions, we can evaluate limits by simply substituting that x value, that input value that you wanted to approach, into your function, anywhere you happen to find an x in the x rule, and just simplify using whatever the order of operations. That's good. That's going to work a lot of the times. What's going to be interesting for us, though, is to talk about functions that are not well-defined, and we're going to find out, we've talked a little bit about how that leads to the rest of calculus. I think you probably filled most of this in today. There's a place in your packet to fill in a section about one-sided limits. So before we could talk about whether the limit exists, we have to understand what it means for a function to have a limit as you approach from one direction or the other. So we have this little notation you can see here, this little plus sign that comes after the x value I'm trying to approach. So I would say the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right in this case is L, because if I were walking along this function, starting on the right-hand side, what y value do I think I'm going to get to if I stop at the place where x equals c? It looks like I'm going to reach a y value of L. And we can notice here there's actually a different answer you would get if you walked along this function starting from the left-hand side. It seems like the y value would approach would be the y value there, which seems to be k. So I would say the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left is k. And then we said, here is an example, our very first example, of a function that does not have a limit that exists. There is no limit as x approaches c of this function because my limit from the left was k, my limit from the right was l. If you asked me to say, hey, what function, do, what, what y value do I approach, I have two different answers. And if there's two different answers, there's no way to decide between them. So there's no limit, no answer to that question. So that's when we were talking about theorem three, which you see on this next slide here. So I can see it showing up a little fuzzy on this document here, but you can double check this in your book. This is theorem three. The limit of f of x as x approaches c is L. It exists, and we're gonna just call it for something to call it, we call it L if and only if the limit as x approaches c to the from the right of f of x equals the limit as x approaches c from the left. So if you came from the left and came from the right and you were headed toward the same value, the same y value, even if there's a hole there, as long as you were headed to the same place, then that place that you were headed, that y value, is the limit of your function as x approaches that particular c value, that particular x value. So I'm going to do that example down at the bottom of page 2. It asks you to find the limit as, f of, as x approaches c of f of x at four or five different values for c. So I'm going to do all mm -hmm, five of them, but I'm going to start with x equals 1 because I think it's going to make this a little bit easier to understand. So question 1, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right? And here we said we're going to focus on marker at c equals 1. So that's this place. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, imagine walking along this graph coming in from the left-hand side, as I approach the place where x equals 1, what y value do I appear to be approaching? It's 0. That's how I got this answer. If, however, I come in from the right-hand side, I end up walking along this part of the graph, what y value does it seem like I'm going to head toward? 
I'm heading toward y equals 1. So I have this answer for the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. So f of x, we're going to talk about this later. I don't think that was actually in the list of questions I asked you. So next question, what is the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? So notice here, no direction is specified. I don't, I'm not saying limit from the left. I'm not saying limit from the right. I'm saying, what's the limit? Well, the limit only exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. We got two different answers here. So that means the limit does not exist. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 does not exist. If you would like to use the abbreviation DNE for does not exist, that's an accepted abbreviation. So just as a side note, what is f of 1? f of 1, it's the y value of the dot that got filled in on that vertical line where x equals 1. And you can see that the colored in dot is at a location of, or where y equals 1. So it happened to be that the right-hand limit and the actual function value were equal. But notice that this function value did not play any part in our decision about the existence of the limit. Let's investigate it, x equals 2. Where x equals 2, I want to know the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So I'm going to come at this. As I approach toward x equals 2 from the left, I seem to be approaching the y value of 2. No, that's 1. But I seem to be approaching a y value of 1. If I walk along this function from the right, I seem to be approaching that same location where the y value is 1. So I would say the left hand limit is 1, the right hand limit is 1. And while it's true that the actual function value f of 2 equals 2 because that's the colored in dot, this part doesn't have anything to do with me answering the big question, which is, I wrote it up here, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x? Well, the limit from the left was 1, the limit from the right was 1, they match, that's the limit. The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals 1. Here, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, so this is the left, I'm going to come here toward the place where x equals 3, I seem to be approaching that location, the y value there is 2. To find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, I'm going to walk on this graph toward x equals 2, but starting over here at positive infinity, I seem to get to the same place where the y value is 2. So I would say that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x equals 2, because the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x equaled the limit as x approached 3 from the right of f of x, and those were both equal to 2. Now it happens to be that f of 3 is also 2. That's a coincidence. We'll see later if that's important to us. It doesn't happen to matter in our discussion of what the limit of f is at the place where x equals 3. Okay, so let's talk about what happens at x equals 0. What would the left-hand limit be? So. It turns out it doesn't, we don't have to worry about what the left-hand limit would be. There is nothing to the left of zero. Oops, let me get the marker. There is nothing to the left of zero in the domain of this function. So if I talked about approaching x equals zero from the left, notice that over here there's no function to walk on. I can talk about the limit from the right. I would come along this piece of the graph and I would be approaching the place where x equals 0 and y equals 1. So there is a right-hand limit, and I hope it makes sense how to talk about that, but if I talk about the left-hand limit, there's nothing to come in on. The numbers to the left of x equals 0 aren't even in the domain. So you could say it does not exist, but it's like it doesn't even, we don't even, we wouldn't even talk about it, let alone say that it doesn't exist. So there's no left-hand limit because there is no left-hand side of the domain. There is a right-hand limit, and that's 1. So I would still say that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals 1. Normally, I need to find the limit from the left and the limit from the right and confirm that they match. 
here, again, that section to the left of x equals zero isn't even defined, so I, it's sufficient to find the limit from the right and say that that's equal to the limit of the function at x equals zero. Just as a side note, f of zero here is one, but this information did not play into our discussion of whether that limit existed and, whether, and what it was equal to. And then we have something similar at x equals 4. We can talk about the limit as x approaches 4 from the left. I'm approaching this place where the y value is 1. So the limit as x approaches 4 from the left is 1. To talk about approaching x equals 4 from the right doesn't make sense because there aren't even any numbers in the domain to the right of 4. So I would still say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 is 1. Even though I wasn't able to confirm that the limit was the same from both sides, the limit was 1 for every part of the domain that was part of the function. Uh, and as a side note, f of 4 equals 1, but again, not related to the question of what the limit is.